Today folks, I've travelled to the far north of New Zealand to buy a Land Rover. Yes folks, I'm five hours away from home. I've come to the far north, way up beyond Auckland, New Zealand's biggest city, to have a look at what to me is the pinnacle of Land Roverness. This thing with sheepdogs chained to it and grass growing up through the chassis is a Series 3 Stage 1. It's the mother of all Land Rovers. Ken, who currently owns the thing, tells me that it's been parked here for 12 years. He's owned it for 15 years, drove it around for the first three, then one of the main leaves on a rear spring broke, he parked it and went and bought something else. But he insists that with a battery in it and some fresh fuel, it should go. We've already pulled out the Kikuyu grass that was growing up through the engine bay because, hey, we don't want a fire. But it looks complete, but very rusty in the unprotected parts. Luckily, Land Rovers have an aluminium body, so the body panels themselves will be fine. The chassis on this one is galvanised, but the door tops are absolutely shagged. Everything on the inside is there, but really, really rough. There's a family of skinks living in here. As I opened the door, I saw two of them scuttle away. So now, equipped with a can of start, you bastard, and an intravenous drip of fresh fuel, we're going to see if we can get this thing started. Ken's inside, winding it over with a fresh battery. No, no, I'm not touching the linkage. Um, well, it should go, it should be going with this. Ooh, here we go. Here we go. By now, any fuel that's been left in this carburetor will have turned to a varnish, so um, we are going to have problems when we get started. Get it started, I'm sure. But I'm very lucky to have this nice twin barrel carburetor with pump jets, rather than the horrible issues that came out on the original beast. It's been really nicely modified. The weld has been polished off, and the manifold almost looks like a genuine manifold. No pumping. Yeah, I was just going to let it uh, idle. I uh, thought, see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Right, we've got a slightly jammed throttle and Ken can't get it back to idle, so I'm going to have to go around and disconnect the cable at this end and um, we'll see what kind of idle we can get out of it. I'm happy with that, that yeah. sounds alright. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cut the tap. Well, it's a bit smoky, but. Yeah. 
That's actually, we'll leave it run for a while if that's alright with you. Yeah, alright. Yeah. Well, you have it. No, smoke no. Smoke stopped? Yeah, smoke stopped. Oh, good. Oh, uh, not stopped, but. Hmm. Uh, that smoke uh, isn't engine smoke. Not quite. It's grass smoke. We've got a small fire going underneath the vehicle, um, which I'll quickly attend to. No, we'll be right now. Is that on the exhaust? Yeah. Does that take long? No. A bit of a rev. Good. It just wants new plugs. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Clean, clean out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's um, the more it runs, the better. Well, you won't probably go much better until you, as you say, but. Thing. Yeah, no, it needs needs a big. Yeah. Oh, that's bloody awesome! Right, we'll have a look at that rear spring. Then. Not turned off. Oh, up to you. Leave it, leave it running. Sounds like a bumper's got a hole in it too. Ah, oh, to knock some dollars off the price for that. Ken's just gone to grab a tractor so that we can lift the rear up and I can have a look at that broken. So while he's doing that, I thought I'd uh, take a moment out to have a look at this other um, spare parts car. I think this one's available too, should there be anybody keen. Right, the dogs are going to go off again because they all think they're going for a run down the farm with Ken. But Ken's actually going to grab a chain and we're going to pull this thing out of the grass so that I can get underneath it. Think about it. And just. Yeah, that little dog just had a go at me. Even though he's on his chain, he's dead keen to take a chunk out of the back of one of my calves. Right, here we go. First time it's moved in 12 years. The engine's running, but it's a shame it's not actually moving under its own steam because the fluid and the clutch and the fluid and the brakes has completely disappeared. Everything's bone dry, so we've got no brakes and no clutch. So I won't be driving at home today. <laughs> right, we've broken the seal between it and nature. Ken's going to turn the tractor around now and use the forks to lift up the rear end and I'll shimmy underneath and just uh, evaluate. Make sure the rear jay runs out and it's on hold yeah. but it's got to be done every um, every year. You've got to renew yeah, it every yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I just wanted to, um, just so that you're not the fork, you know? Yeah. It's, look, even if it's completely lapsed, so long as everything on it is tickety boom, yep. it's about 680 to get it back in the system again oh, okay. with a set of new plates. Oh, okay. But I'd love to keep it on the old plates yeah, if right. I can. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. Yeah. yeah. It adds more value, I think. Oh, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I just want originality, you know. Yeah. Good. Right, get under. Well here we are. Twelve years ago, this is the reason why it was parked up. It had been used as a um, boat launching vehicle and the back end of it had been dipped in the salt water repeatedly. So we've got quite a bit of rust going on here on the axle casing and the springs. Thankfully, as I said earlier, the chassis is galvanised and appears to be completely corrosion free. 
but it looks like all I'll have to do is shout this thing a new pair of springs a good sandblast of the rear axle pay the exhaust system a bit of attention look how clean that chassis is and there's a wee bit of rust starting in the petrol tank I might shout it a nice new second hand fuel tank Can you see it oh yes rust yeah. it's, the rust has made it break yeah. oh ok yeah. Yeah. You, it, you know where the sandwich plate is where the u-bolts yep. are yep. where it goes under there yep. it's all rusted oh, around okay. there yep. it, it must have been dipping boats in and out of the water yeah, and probably it's just ne never been washed it, what happened uh, it came from one grey so it's more than likely was I've had Land Rovers trundling through my life since I was a toddler. So owning my first Stage 1 V8 is quite a feather in my cap. I'm going to take a lot of pleasure in getting this thing home, pulling it to bits and making it the best I possibly can. It's um, going to be called Brutus, I think, being a V8. And it'll go well with Larissa, the lockdown Land Rover, who's the blue one in the background, and Sandy the Landy, who's my general run around truck. I've enjoyed each and every Land Rover that I've ever owned. They're the kind of thing that you can really get involved with. They're a bare bones vehicle that will take the, a lot of punishment. They're perfect as a first car for a teenager. Very hard to break and very hard to hurt yourself when you're driving one. When you pull into the supermarket or a service station, there's always somebody who wants to chat and tell you that their dad had one just like this, or I learnt to drive in one of those, or my uncle used to take me down the beach in his. There's always a Land Rover story wherever you go. The stage one that I've just bought, for me, is the pinnacle of Land Rover. Now. This one is going to be my keep forever car. It's the kind of thing that is a sturdy, hard-ass truck that I can pull anything home with. <laughs>